everyone. We're going to talk about emails. We've been doing a lot of emailing this year and we're going to continue to do so. And this doesn't just go for students. This can also be a video for adults as well. We've all been emailing a lot, so it's kind of good to get some reminders on some things that maybe we've forgotten or just proper emailing etiquette. I want to talk real quick about this. So emailing is a little bit different than messaging or texting. So when you're emailing, there's typically going to be some kind of expectation that this is going to be more formal. It's more professional. And so you want to be more direct and polite with these. And we're going to avoid the use of emoticons and emojis. Now I do want to preface this. This video is available to everybody to learn more about emailing, but I'm going to be specific specifically talking about targeting my students specifically for this. And so even if you're not part of my class or part of our school system, a lot of these tips will still be able to be used in any kind of format for emailing. All right, so let's get started. So the very first thing, if you look at the screen, I want you guys to notice that my Gmail that I am using is obviously going to be from my channel just to protect uh, some of my privacy as well as uh, the rest of my school. But just so you know, if you are a student, you need to make sure that your Gmail is going to be your school account. We do not want your personal email uh, connected to our school when we're emailing. We want to keep it professional, so we all need to be using our school accounts. Another thing to keep in mind is that we just want to make sure we're being formal, um, we're going to be avoiding any slang, and we're going to keep it nice and polite. Keep in mind that the reason I'm wanting to go over this with you guys is because it's all about communication, and there are a lot of points where we can miscommunicate this year just because everything is virtual right now. And so instead of being direct face-to-face, -face, we're going to have to make sure that we are communicating and being for sure on exactly what it is that we are trying to convey to each other. So please keep that in mind as well as we dive in. All right, so the very first thing that we want to do, um, once you guys log on to yours, I'm going to go ahead and log in to mine. All right, and so this is not my school account, but this is a great example. So if you guys want to send an email, the very first thing you're going to want to do is hit compose in that top left corner. This is the exact same format that your school email has. All right, I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger so you can see. Um, okay, got it. What we're going to do is look at the anatomy of this email first. I do want to make a note just real quick that because you are on your email account, do not ever let anybody who is not you onto this. If it's a parent or guardian, yeah, they should be able to look through your Gmail for your school and whatever because it's they're your guardian but they should not be sending anything through your gmail a parent or guardian should have their own gmail account and so if you are a parent or guardian please make sure that when you are emailing teachers it goes directly through your own email account otherwise we do get a whole lot of miscommunication everyone should be using their gmail account or email account that way we always know again we have that communication we know who is talking to who and that's very critical especially during this time okay so the very first thing i know it says recipients here this is who you're going to be sending a message to a lot of people would say this is the first thing you should click on you should type in who you're going to be sending this to i'm going to recommend against that if you are not done with your email and it accidentally sends it can look kind of sloppy and so just from a bad experience i had uh, trying to email a professor and i didn't finish the message correctly and it I, it made me feel very unprofessional. So I actually like to skip that and then come back to that at the very end after I've checked everything. Totally up to you. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the subject. The subject should be short, sweet, to the point. It should not be a sentence. It should just be the main subject, some kind of noun. Or if it's a question, you would write question. But I want us to be specific with this. So as an example, if you are having a question about nouns, maybe collective nouns are giving you a hard time because there's eight subcategories that my eighth graders go over. So let's say they're having a problem with that. So they would write collective noun question. Boom, I immediately know they have a question about our nouns unit, specifically on collective nouns. I already have an idea of what the message is going to be about and how can I help this student. 
All right, so the next thing you want to do is give some kind of salutation. We're going to dismiss that. Um, a lot of times a salutation is some kind of greeting. I like to say hi and then say the name of the person with a comma at the end. One of the most formal ways you can do that is just dear so-and-so. I'm going to be sending a message to myself and so I'm going to address uh, myself as missing no. So I'm going to write dear missing no. Please notice I put the comma on the end and I did a couple enters down. That way my salutation is going to be separate from the body or the message that I'm trying to send. All right, so whenever someone sends a message, a lot of times there was some miscommunication this year because I would have a student send a message that basically said, uh, I don't get it. And I'm happy they reached out to me, but that didn't quite tell me what they actually needed help with. What were they confused about? What did they already know? What did they already try? And so when I recommend you sending an email, especially to a teacher, most likely it's because you have a question. I would like you to address three things. The very first thing you should state is the problem. Why are you emailing? So if I have a question about collective nouns, I would probably say, I am emailing. I am emailing you because I have a question about the collective nouns worksheet. Boom. I know this is about the homework assignment. They are struggling with collective nouns. I automatically know how I'm going to respond. The second part should be, what have you done to address this already? What have you done for yourself? That way I can recommend something new to you. I don't want to waste your time and say, well, just go back and look at the notes if you've already done that. Let's go and add that part. All right, so an example might say, I have looked at the notes, but I'm confusing collective nouns with plural nouns. So, okay, now I've looked a little bit deeper. What have you done? I'm closer to knowing exactly what the problem is, and then we can go from there. The very last thing you should include is how can we help you? How can the teacher assist you with this problem? I'm gonna go ahead and add, would you mind explaining to me the exact difference between these two types of nouns? Absolutely, I know exactly what I can do. And then I can send a really quick response to that, but we're not done just yet. So we have our three main things. We have said our problem, we've established what we've done to solve it, and then we've said how we can be assisted. So the last thing we need is something called a closing. We're gonna enter down a couple times. I'm gonna go ahead and say, my favorite one is probably the word best, but you can go with sincerely and thank you always works as well. I'm going to go and put best and then you will sign your name. For students, I would recommend you put your first and last name. For my sake, I'm going to put uh, best missing no. That's who I am. That's my identity here. And so I'm talking to myself, but that's okay. Um, so the very last thing you need to do <laughs> double check, look and revise and edit. Read it out loud if you have to, because if you're sending a message and it's confusing to people, they probably can't help you if they don't really know what you're asking. So I'm just gonna double check mine real quick. I'm gonna check for capitalization, spelling and punctuation. All right, so I double checked. I think I'm ready to go. Uh, so the last thing that I need to do, I'm gonna go up to recipients and I am gonna send it to myself. Um, and this way, um, we can also go re receiving a message and sending something back. All right, so I'm going to come down here. It's blue, and I'm going to hit send. All right, so it popped up immediately for me. So what we're going to do, um, if I, as the teacher, I would click on this. I see myself. I see the problem. And then I would hit reply to send a reply. Now, sometimes you'll see the word reply versus reply all. Because I'm only one person sending it to one person, I only have the option to reply. However, if you have um, multiple recipients, people that you're sending an email to, they're all going to get it. And then whoever you sent it to will be able to either respond directly to you, the sender, or they could hit reply all and send it to everybody in that group. So it's almost like a group chat, um, but then you get to choose. Do you want to send it to just one person 
or do you want to send it to the full group? So just make sure you watch for that. Reply is one person. Reply all would be everybody. But again, that's only if it's sent to multiple people. And this one was just one. All right, so now we're at the hardest part of emailing just in general. So as you can see, I have sent this one hour ago. You need to wait to get a response. A lot of people are impatient and I totally get it. I want answers immediately. I want responses immediately, but that's not realistic. So if you send an email to a teacher or anyone in general, you need to wait 24 hours before you reach out to them again. We want to talk to you guys. We're so excited to see you um, whenever that is, but we're so excited to talk to you guys again, or at least have some kind of communication going with you, but please be patient with us. We will absolutely get back to you. If we send an email to you, maybe we haven't heard from you in a little bit, same thing. I'm going to wait about 24 hours to get a response. After 24 hours, only then should you do something that I like to call a nudge where you just send another message. Hey, I haven't heard from you and I just wanted to send a follow-up email with the same question. Okay, but waiting is really hard, but that's really important. So those are just a few of the tips on how to send a proper email. I will have a little cheat sheet in the description below. Feel free to click on that anytime if you don't want to rewatch the video. And that way I'll just have all the tips there and kind of like an outline of exactly what's expected in order to have a nice, polite, straightforward, clear email. Thank you all for watching and don't be afraid to learn. Bye guys.